Week Podcast. I'm Charlie Nath. I'm Edward Lewis. Yes, and Edward is filling in for Charlie Cotton. If you don't know who Edward is, he's one of our bombshell sports reporters. Bombshell sports. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Edward. Of course. Anytime, Charlie. Uh, we got a lot of topics today. We're going to be starting with Kanye West. He and Bianca, they've been kind of teaming up for Bianca to wear these like risque outfits, but he did something kind of peculiar. We'll get into that. Uh, Croy Bierman and Kim, this nasty divorce has now included their dogs. Uh, we got some footage of Croy going off on the police after neighbors complained that his dogs were on the loose. So we'll play that for you. Um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Ryan Anderson doesn't look like they're going to get a divorce anytime soon. I actually spoke to Ryan's divorce attorney, and you're going to be surprised by what he told me. Um, and then we'll get into some sports stories. Edward is going to take the charge on those. The starting lineup for the Olympic flag bearers has been announced. Oh, yeah. can't wait yeah. to hear who it is. Mm-hmm. And then there's some Paris Olympics uh, condoms. Sex. <laughs> sex. <laughs> we'll get into Paris Olympics sex. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, starting off, uh, Kanye West and Bianca Sensori, they went to the Chateau Marmont where they were having lunch. And of course, Bianca was wearing such a risque outfit. Well, Kanye usually embraces the paparazzi to photograph her. Not this time. You actually see him uh, pushing her behind him in order for the photogs uh, to keep the photogs away from taking her photo. And it's very possible that Kanye is sick of the media attention, which I don't know if that's possible, but maybe it is. I don't know, hot and cold Kanye. Um, so it's kind of like a 180 uh, on his attitude. Because usually I feel like the whole thing is like, you want to be photographed. Yeah, we, we talked about this on the podcast before, right? That like we believe this to be a, a Kanye West a contrived thing where right. he he brought Bianca into the spotlight mm-hmm. and now like tells her or makes her or suggests that she wears provocative clothing and therefore uh, he looks better or cooler and and their right. relationship looks amazing and 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 people want to be a part of it. Uh, but yeah, I don't really understand now why he is kind of backing off Changing of it. That. And it's not like she was in something. Uh, uh, more provocative than she usually is, right? right. It's uh, the same old last see-through week we garb. saw full, like f- like full frontal. Like it wasn't even. It, she had like a, a sheer top on that m- might as well not have been a top. Um, Do you think? Um, because you know, obviously, people are going to be obsessed with Kanye, whatever he does, regardless of his tainted past. Do you feel like he's more interesting with this whole Bianca sheer outfit thing? Uh, I do. I think it makes him. Uh, maybe likable is the wrong term, but but perhaps that's the word I'm looking for, or something synonymous with that. Because like <laughs> because people want that, right? Or I guess to say males want that. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. at least some males do. Like you want to be around the attractive girl who everybody who's fawns naked. over, who's out, who's naked, <laughs> but owns it too. You know, right? I mean, there's some yeah. people that if they dress like Bianca, be like, what are you doing? But Bianca wears it well, and I think it 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 does. It it, it makes him desirable for the first time in a long time, right? I mean, everybody. Uh, uh, I miss the old Kanye, right? That's the the whole yeah. thing, right? Like mm-hmm. before His he went crazy, music. everybody yep. loved Kanye. Everybody wanted to be at his concerts. Now it's like they want to be as far away from Kanye as possible. And Bianca is, I think, helping him get back into that status a little bit. Yeah, she is. She's cool. She's hot. She's mysterious. It's like that's she what every speak. that's what every guy wants. Right? <laughs> Edward, that is horrible. <laughs> not, me. not me, but I mean, some do. Uh, oh god. Uh, no, I do. I think it, it does. I think it, it, which is why this whole thing is so interesting. Why is he all of a sudden shielding her? It's the whole thing is interesting to me because Kanye famously talked about how he read this. This is like such a deep cut. But he Kanye has talked about in the past how he read this book called 48 Laws of Power, which basically there's one chapter in there and it like gives a bunch of examples about how you can create like commotion around yourself and around your brand. And like some of the examples go back to like Houdini days where or like, you know, the the Wrigley brothers from the circus, like what they would do to get people's attention, get, you know, people coming to see them or whatever. And I forget who it was, but there was like a story in there about like, oh, Every day at noon, they would set a brick on top of another brick. And that was like the shtick. And so people were like, why is that person doing that? That's so odd. And it just got all like a huge crowd. So like because Kanye's talked about this, it's clearly something he learned from that book where it's like, oh, you want to create something mysterious because it gets people like talking about you. Right. Feels phony. So why is he backtracking now? Yeah, I don't know. Probably just 
another narrative. That is, yeah, yeah, maybe part of part of the shtick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, moving on to Croy Beerman. He had a face off with cops over some dog drama. Um, we got some surveillance footage of his run in with cops in late June outside of his home that he kind of sort of shares with his ex. Kim uh, in Georgia and neighbors had called authorities to report um, that their dog got out named Stone. And here's a little clip of his interaction with police. We've had uh, animal control calls yeah. 10 plus times on us. It's, uh, okay. We're in the public eye. We're going through a very nasty divorce. This community does not like us. It's, it's just harassment, but whatever okay. you need me to say or whatever you need to do. No, I just, we're just here, here to investigate, sir. I think this is super silly. I mean, he's trying to, like, not take accountability by being like, oh, all the neighbors hate us. Everyone knows we're going through the, this, this divorce. Like, oh, poor me. Give us a break. How about you don't let your dog out of your property? Yeah, I, I, I feel twofold about this because, number one, the dog is big. It's a King Corso. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like, you know, a little chihuahua chasing around people. And there were two yeah. people who alleged that they were chased by this dog and they yeah. were scared. And then in, in, later in our, our police body cam footage that we obtained, uh, they mentioned that they at some point thought they were going to have to pepper spray the dog. That he was that aggressive or Aww. it was that aggressive. I don't know if it's Stone is a girl or a boy. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I do believe Croy. I mean, these cops come to this house every week, I yeah. mean, every single week. And you could see it in his face. He's so like, He's so done with this. He's like, why are you guys here now? And they're like, well, people have called the cops. He's like, Jesus, everybody hates us. Like, so I do. I think. But like, like, don't you think that's coming from a, a, pla a certain place? Like, if everyone's hating you, like, maybe you should be like, why do they hate me? Why well, does this keep they happening? They hate me because cops are always at my house at yeah, all times like, of night. Give... We're always screaming. We're always yelling. We, right, we're exactly. Famous. There's paparazzi out in front of our house all the time. And if you look at the background, this appears to be a very beautiful neighborhood. Yes. And it seems like these people have lived in this quiet, peaceful, beautiful home for long times. And now Croy and Kim come in here with their circus. And now it's like, anytime this puppy gets out and sniffs puppy. my leg, I'm going to go ballistic and call cops. So I... I I feel it twofold. Like I said, like uh, uh, on one hand, lock up your dog, dude. Like, yes. it, especially because I, I don't believe this is the first time. I think no, it's been out before. They mentioned in the surveillance or in the body cam footage that, that he had been out there to to to, to gripe about the dog. Before. Yeah. So uh, lock up your dog. But on the flip side, I do think that the neighbors are out to get them, and I I don't necessarily blame the neighbors. This is a circus. Every week we run a story on Kim and Croy doing something ballistic out in front of the yard. I get know. out of my neighborhood, and if it means I have to call the cops on your dog every other six weeks, I'm gonna do it. I guess. So. Right, and also by by the way, if the if the dog gets out and does bite somebody, they're gonna have to pay up oh, for yeah. medical bills. They're mm -hmm. gonna be responsible. So he should be glad the cop showed up and said, like, hey, you know, put your dog back in the yeah. house. The cops said that too. I mean, they were like, if it bites somebody, you're on the hook for this. And totally. Then we've done stories too with Dak Prescott, Dallas Cowboys quarterback. His dog actually did get out and bite somebody, and they mm -hmm. they threatened to put it down and, and they have to move it out of the city in order to avoid euthanasia. So yeah, like it's it's a I always it's say good. I don't think there's bad dogs. I think there's bad owners. Right. And I don't and this the, is that I don't definitely bad the dog situation. was like eating people. You know what I mean? I just think it was right. out and bothering people and they are so over the Kim and Croy thing, it's like we can get him now. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, moving on to Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Ryan Anderson. Their divorce is gonna take a while. Um, obviously, she is currently pregnant with her ex fiance Ken's baby. Um, and she's still kind of going through this divorce with her strange husband, Ryan Anderson. Um, I know that Gypsy wanted kind of like a speedy divorce. She wanted this to be done and over with. She wants to move on with her, her life with Ken. Um, well, I spoke to, uh, Ryan's divorce attorney yesterday and he told me this is not wrapping up anytime soon. And the reason why is because there's a law in Louisiana. So when you are, uh, divorcing from someone and you don't have any children, you have to live apart legally for six months. So, and that clock starts when the divorce papers are served. Okay. So even though Gypsy and Ryan publicly separated in March, he wasn't, Ryan wasn't served divorce papers until mid July. So like just recently. Right. So now this clock is ticking for six months. Um, so yeah, like for this next six months, they are still legally married. Got it. Um, and as soon as the six months is over, I am told like they'll be able to get like a court hearing pretty quickly, like within the next couple of weeks. So we're looking at end of January earliest that right. this thing is going to wrap up. Um, but I am told they are, you know, behind the scenes working on other things. 
They did uh, work out the spouse's support and alimony situation. We know originally in her in her documents, uh, she was asking for some kind of spousal support. Well, they both decided neither is going to get spousal support or alimony. I mean, they're only married for two years. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are going to have to divvy out property. And property could include some of the deals that they signed for their shows, mm-hmm. their lifetime shows that they had together. Um, and then also she's had a couple book deals, which I was told apparently Ryan feels like he has some claim to. Um, and then they have a dog as well, Pixie. Mm-hmm. Um, but that should be easy because Gypsy's already said, I want Pixie to stay with Ryan because that's where the dog lived and that's her home. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a while before she's able to move on. So so the significance of the story then is that she can't officially or really move on with Ken until this goes down, right? I mean, that's yeah. really the, the the significance. Even though they're they're totally separated, they don't want any part of each other anymore. It's just now she unfortunately has to deal with this for at least six more months. Correct? That's yeah, the significance and, of it. And also while I mean, she's, she's trying to move on, I mean. exactly. So she's not going to be getting married to Ken anytime soon, right? Because she's got to wrap up her right. she's already, previous she's marriage. Yet, yeah. But also, um, we had done a story that legally Ryan will be the presu- presumed father of her baby and not Ken, even though. Um, she has said that Ken is simply because the they're married. Because yes, because okay. of this strange law, he okay. will be the presumed father. But obviously, they can They'll do, do a, a DNA test. test. Yeah, and, and is there some question whether or not Ryan is the father? There was some speculation online. People were but saying the, the math the wasn't mathing. What but, do you mean? Like the three of Ryan, Ken, and Gypsy are all in agreement that it's Ken's, or is there is there? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think so. Okay. Um, but you know, uh. Maybe, maybe that's not the case. Maybe Ryan does think right. he's his kid. But right, Gypsy has that. like laid out literally her sex timeline, being okay. like, I ended things with Ryan on this day. On this day, on these five days in a row, I had I made love to Ken all these days. How like, soon after the breakup with Ryan? Um, I don't remember, How but days? enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough for what? She's getting it. She's getting it. Um the other question I had is why does Ryan not want spousal support because Ryan's a, forgive me, Ryan, if you're listening, is, is a nobody, correct? Like, uh, I mean, he's like a regular guy. He's a teacher. I think he teaches like so, special but, but ed. Gypsy Rose is a massive celebrity who, yes. who, who has the ability to make a ton of money. Why? I'm curious why his attorney is not fighting for spousal support. Spousal I support. think because also it was like a speedy divorce or a speedy marriage. Like it wasn't very long. So I don't know how much claim he actually has. I live with fortune. this famed person for two years and we were going to live a charmed life and now I don't get that life because we're divorcing. You should pay me to have the the same lifestyle I was going to get with you when you made the promise to me to stay forever. Wow. Edward wants some Dude, some hey, fireworks. I didn't I didn't I, yeah if he's a nobody like I I he's not gonna be a celebrity after this. Gypsy's I mean gonna he's on a TV right? show couple only TV because shows. of gypsy though no yes yes very true very true man I would want some money. All right. Well, Ed, Ryan, if you're listening, I guess Edward you wants to give you Pixie. some advice. I'm in Pixie. All right. Moving on. Our almost news segment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow. The Olympics start this week. Uh, Friday is the opening ceremony. It's really cool, actually. Mm-hmm. They're uh, they're doing down the river, the famous river in front of the Eiffel Cien. Tower. The Sien. Is that how you pronounce Cien. it? Sign. Sign. No, Cien? not definitely not sign. Sign. River sign. River Sen. I don't know. Uh, uh, it is going to have. Boats. They're gonna have all the athletes in boats, um, and they're all gonna like proceed down the river. And uh, there's gonna be stands and fans in the stands on the sides. It looks actually really pretty. It's really stunning. Uh, Did you see our story yesterday that we broke? Who's performing? Oh yeah, Celine Dion's gonna be Celine performing Dion, there. Only one song, and apparently she's getting two million dollars. Two million dollars. Yeah, I did see that. Uh, but the to lead out Team USA's boat is going to be two flag bearers, okay. a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. We already kind of knew flag that flag bearers for the U.S. For the Team USA. Yeah. Okay. Every every country has a man and a woman I, holding the flag. Yeah. They're and they had a little jacket that's different than everybody else's. It's kind of your country's leader. Uh, we knew on Monday that it was LeBron James. Yeah. And then today they announced the female one, and it's Coco Goff. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with her, she's yes. a 20 year old superstar tennis player. Oh. Um, amazing. Won her first a uh, major title last year. Uh, has been in in like the spotlight for years. Though she she's like broken the scene at 15 years old. I think she beat one of the Williams sisters when she was like 15. Wow. Big remarkable. deal. Yeah, she's a huge deal. Uh, how how is, do they pick these people? So it's a team vote. Uh, uh, so all the Team USA competitors voted, which is really interesting. Obviously, LeBron, 
you would imagine everybody would be like, that's our guy. He's the greatest NBA player of all time. Put right. it out there. Coco, though, is, is unique. Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of other candidates that could have had it, yeah. especially given how young she is. She's now the youngest player ever to to carry this flag. So Wow, that's um, amazing. Good unique. for yeah. her. Cool, right? I mean, to be a tennis player, and, you know, it's not... It's not the world's sexiest sport when you consider there's, there's basketball and all that stuff at the Olympics. and Tennis isn't sexy? Not in, in terms of the Olympics. I mean, you would think it's gymnastics, it's basketball, it's maybe even women's volleyball. You know, it's like the volleyball sports. Who knows, you know? Uh, Edward. Uh, tennis, tennis, is, tennis is on its own. It's kind of like golf. It's kind of like soccer. Oh, they, no. Don't put tennis no, 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 with no, golf. They have, like, their tennis own, is actually exciting. They have their own majors. Like, like, like soccer has the World Cup and the Euros and the Copa America. And tennis has its four major tournaments. Golf has its yeah. four major tournaments. Nobody cares as much about it in the Olympics as they do, like, a basketball or gymnastics or swimming you know what i mean so uh, uh, okay it was it's an interesting honor for her um but also not I, I guess maybe they maybe they won't maybe they will inside of the olympic village they uh all the athletes stay and every year everybody wonders about how much sex they're all having which apparently uh, there's like a lot yeah yeah well you you hear ups and downs or, or whether or not so a few years back ups and downs you, you, but yeah. <laughs> a few years ago they, they created these cardboard beds and a lot of people thought they were anti-sex beds uh the creators <laughs> the creators of the beds though said it was just simply about like reducing waste it's cardboard it's recyclable uh a couple of the olympic athletes like uh, danced on them this week, and you could tell that you could get freaky on them if you wanted. Oh, okay. The, the bigger thing, though, is on Tuesday, one of the athletes went through, like, the gift bag, mm -hmm. and there is a ton of condoms in the gift bag. Oh, wow. Like, so, all sizes? Um, <laughs> I didn't check the sizes. Um, <laughs> but they were, like, uh, unique things. They had some funny sayings on them. Fair play, safe play. Uh, no, do, no need to be a gold medalist to wear it. Uh, and ah. one... Less joking, Lisa could send first. So, uh, oh. yeah, I mean, they're promoting sex there, which in the past we had heard maybe not with the anti-sex beds and all this stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Coco Goff, LeBron James, sex, the Olympics has it all. I thought, like, as an athlete, a lot of people kind of, like, don't have sex because they, like, want to wait for the mm -hmm. match and, like, get all their frustration sure. out then. Like, isn't that kind of famous That's in, like, the boxing Rocky, community? Rocky, uh, there's a line in Rocky where women make men's knees week uh, the the saying was like they didn't want rocky to have sex because uh, uh you want the testosterone and all that stuff so yeah. yes there is a it is a famous thing where they uh you, you the sports community believes that you shouldn't be having sex before you play in order to be better but hey they're promoting it and it seems like uh to, to one of our, our our colleagues spark mojo um on the sports show wait is it, mojo there no 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 but oh. he's an athlete you know what i mean he right. said look if you're doing it at home why would you want to do it at the Olympics? You know, if I'm if I'm playing football yeah. on Friday nights, that's my tradition. Uh, why not? And you're there in France. Yeah. But I, oh, what, how they, but I oh, I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't do <laughs> but I feel like French women are pretty hot. Doesn't necessarily need need to be like an Olympian to Olympian. I, yeah, I don't know. It yeah. could be I, like, I wonder hey. If you could bring in a, a, person outside of the Olympic Village into the Olympics. Like a prostitute? No, I don't mean Okay, that. Edward. <laughs> a prostitute. <laughs> All right, moving on to today in history. Um, today is Tell an Old Joke Day. Got a joke, Edward, on the on the fly? Uh, I had I was looking up moon puns because I was doing a moon, moon a moon story for the Eiffel Tower and I it was one of them was silly, but I can't remember. Okay. But oh. I'm just if, you, if I okay, could say it right I, now, you would laugh. I got a joke for you. Yeah. Um, why was the chicken so handsome? Why was the chicken so handsome? Because. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was really good. All right. Uh, this day in 1982. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> this day in 1982, Eye of the Tiger. Eye of Tiger. From what movie? Yes, Rocky, number three. About that. How fitting. Was uh, on top of the U.S. pop charts. Do you do you know quick quick uh, trivia question? Do you know who danced to Eye of the Tiger for her big debut on Dancing with the Stars? I have no idea. Think about it. Eye of the Tiger. Britney Spears. No. Oh. Paris Carol Hill. Baskin. Oh. Yes. Uh, cringy dance. Um, yeah. and then this day in 2020, Regis Philbin passed away. R.I.P. He was 88. Um, and then some birthdays. J Lo, it's her official it's birthday. birthday. Oh, Remember, nice she birthday. celebrated this past weekend, Bridgerton uh -huh. theme birthday. Mm -hmm. Also, Amelia Earhart, the plain girl that went years disappearing. Old. Yeah, yes, <laughs> she would have been very old. Okay. Um, R.I.P. Uh, Barry Bonds, sixty. <laughs> and today, also Marvin the Martian. It's Marvin the Martian's birthday. The cartoon character. Yes. Yeah. He's not dead though. 
No, I don't think so. Have, yeah. Has he been canceled? I don't, I don't know. know. I think he's still like good, right? You tell me. All right. It's your, it's your segment. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And Edward, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow.